guys, it's August 28th, 2020. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and I have tons of stuff to show you today. I've been crazy busy sewing in my sewing studio. I wanted to let you know that I came up with something called Scrappy September and it's gonna, it's a way for me to encourage you to just go in your stash for September. We're gonna have some prizes. There's a hashtag FQS Scrappy September and all the information is on the Jolly, jo Jolly Jabber blog. We're gonna have some gift cards. But basically, I was, um, I needed to make something for my house. And I thought, I don't wanna go spend money, even though I would be spending money at my own store. So I decided that I was going to force myself to make, make something from my stash, 100%. So what I did is I'm getting two side tables and so the side tables are much smaller than the one that I have now. So the quilts that I have on there now, I'll have to use for something else because they're way, they're just not the right size. So I measured the tables and you're gonna notice I don't have binding on it and the reason why is my tables haven't come and I want the quilts to be the exact same size. So what I did is I went and dug through my stash. So this challenge i really want you to not buy anything so i found a pattern for my stash i found this pattern called mini stems from fig tree i found old charm packs old layer cakes back background everything is from my stash the backing everything is from like five collections and it was actually amazing how much dent I made in my stash. And it actually, when I was done, I felt really good because I felt like I'm actually using what I have. I didn't buy anything. I didn't even buy a pattern. Now we did put some scrappy patterns online for you to look at, but the goal of this is for you to just go in your stash, dig through everything you have. So this is what I made. So I made two of these. This is the first one and this is the second one and so and the back these were just fabrics that i had these are some of these fabrics this fabric i can tell you is like probably eight years old wow yep so these are all fig tree fabrics even the background i found the background in my stash so it's just a way for me to encourage you to sew um from what you have. And the goal of it is to go through your room, find something you already have, like don't buy a pattern, don't buy fabric, because you're gonna feel so good when you're done because you're gonna feel like, oh, I used four charm packs and backgrounds. And what I did is if I didn't use the rest of the charm pack, I starched it and put it in my, um, my scrap buckets. So it was a great way and I felt really good because I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm actually using these charm packs, a fig tree. Um, and they're old, like none of this is new. But it felt really good, so I thought, well, if I'm gonna do that, I should show you what I'm doing. Even the border fabric I found in my stash. So I think I have more of a stash than I think, but I'm definitely gonna try to do this more. Um, I just needed some quilts for my new side table, and I thought, well, why would I? Well, what I originally thought I would do is just take the ones I have and cut them down and then put new binding on it but the fabric is discontinued because it was like a shiny, shinier fabric and it was, so I can't do that. So I thought, well, I'll have to make something new. And um, Gina quilted them for me. They look great mm -hmm. from Thread Graffiti. And I'm just super excited that I did something with what I have already. And I was surprised that I had enough of this background because um, I was afraid I was gonna run out and I actually didn't know what Bella it was because it was in my stash. So I was just super careful because I thought, well, if I run out, I don't even know what color it is. So um, I hope that you guys will join us in Scrappy September um, and use kind of what you have because I think that once you do it, it'll make you really feel good because it'll just, I don't know, it just kind of rejuvenated something in me because it was just using what I had. And I, I was like, well, you can't get on the Fat Quarter Shop website because I, I was finding myself going to the website for like the greens. And I was like, no, you gotta dig. You gotta dig in your stash for <laughs> greens. So I really made myself dig and I would try, I would get on the side and then I'd be like, no, you gotta get off the site. <laughs> um, so I made this about, I don't know, maybe a month ago and I thought it would be, be great to show you guys. Yeah. 
Um, and it is a contest. So yes. there are three $25 gift cards as prizes. You go to the blog for info, and then you just use the hashtag to yeah. enter the contest. And I can't wait to see what you guys make. Um, of course, I made something small. But it was, I mean, it was quite, it was, it was quite a adventure. <laughs> because I was trying to put together different collections and just anything that matched. All right. Uh, we're getting lots of love here for the quilts you showed. Everyone's loving them, saying they're uh, so darn cute. Thanks. Super cute. Uh, and then there were a few questions that were kind of coming in before live stream. Uh, oh, Mary Jo Casey says, my first live chat looks like I've been missing out. Oh, Welcome, Mary. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, and the binding, I'm going to, uh, the binding is a stripe. It's a brown stripe that I had. Um, and what I'm going to do is when my tables come in, I'm going to trim it to the exact same size and then put the binding. Mm -hmm. So I will finish, finish it, but I wanted to make sure it's the right size. Because my side tables in my bedroom are just huge. And I feel like the bed and the, it just kind of, the room just, ugh, I was just so sick of the furniture. So <laughs> I'm going to, um, so it's, the furniture I got is much smaller. So it won't like be so powerful. Over when you walk, yeah, that. It's just like when you walk in, it was just like the whole room. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you have a small bedroom and then you have this big furniture, it just does not work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Teresa Shore, Shore uh, was asking, how many quilts does Kimberly make in a week? In a week, um, I do about 25 a year would be, so that's two a week. But what I'll do is I'll do a bunch all at once. So this week I worked on Moda Blockheads, just talking about the next thing. So what I did on Moda Blockheads is, I am working on motor blockheads, but I don't need as many blocks as they're putting out because I'm doing my setting a little bit different. So I worked about eight hours on it this week and I planned out the entire rest of my quilt. And I had a couple things to show you, but it wasn't enough, but I'm going to try to get all of it finished so that I have it in a row and I can bring it and show you stacks. I did um, want to show you that I have been working on the Quilting Life free block of the month. And I don't remember which ones I've shown you. So I'm just gonna show you the, oops. I'm just gonna show you the ones I have done again. And I do have some that are in certain colors. Oops, my little thing is not working. So you can see like I intentionally did some just totally different colors for my placement at the end. This is my favorite one. It's upside down. So I fussy cut that and I fussy cut this one in the center. And so this, I am not sure how I'm going to finish it. She is going to show me how she's finishing hers. And then I'm going to decide if I'm going to do, I fussy cut that one too in the center. So I'm going to decide, oh, there's another one too. So this is a free block of the month. If you go to aquiltinglife.com, Sherry McConnell gives a free block every month and it comes in three different sizes. I used Vintage Happy 2 collection by Moda and this is September. I'm going to give you a tease. September is done. I can't show you, but it's going to come out next, next week. I think next Monday, this Monday. So that's something I've been working on. So that quilt will be done. And then another thing I've been working on is all of my log cabin blocks. Ooh. So this is my stack. So I'm just gonna show you all my log cabin blocks, kind of. I don't, of course, remember exactly which ones I showed you already. So I have added to them since the last time. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest and tell you that I am struggling with how to finish this. So I laid, I don't have a design board. So I used my floor. And so I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do and I laid it out and it just looked horrible. And then I laid out a different design and I, my kids helped me actually, because mm -hmm. I was like, I do not want to get on the floor that many times. But I just really do not know what, how I'm going to finish these course I'm going to finish it's just 
with all the different colors, because it's not one collection, that's what's throwing me off. Sometimes when I work with a collection um, and I'm working with one collection, I really don't have problems with color. But for example, on this, this is Bonnie and Camille and this is Lori Holt. But when I put them on the floor, I just really did not feel the, the love for what I was doing. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet and just make a decision. I mean, I have some ideas. It's just not good enough for what I want to do. And I want to make a couple more blocks. So those are my blocks. I do have enough blocks to make a quilt. Um, to make a lap quilt. Let me count how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I have 36. And so the goal of this, if you haven't been watching for a while, is every year I will make a quilt using the leftovers from the quilts that I make. So you can see that, let's see. Some of my leftovers from, for example, this quilt. So when I'm making this quilt, if I have leftovers, I'll put it in a block. And I am using our six inch log cabin paper pieces. And so this quilt at the end of the year will have a little bit of every, not every fabric, but a lot of fabrics that I had that I used in quilts. Now for this quilt, these strips, I started with charm packs. Well, I didn't have enough to make a block because you need six inches. So I didn't use any leftovers of this, but I actually used most of the charm packs. So there wasn't much left over. So that's kind of what I've been working on. Blockheads, Sherry's quilt, the log cabin, this. It's fun to actually show you stuff. Um, I also have been working on socialites. And if you go back two weeks, I showed you every block and I finally finished my two. I had two half square triangles that were not done. So this is going to be starting very soon. It starts September 25th and you will come to our blog every Friday and you get a free pattern that comes in three different sizes and you can sew along with us and you just can sew one size. I sewed all of the sizes. So my whole box is full and you'll see that I changed my box because the box I had was the boxes that I have at home and I wanted them all match and I can't buy that box anymore so I switched the box because I know you guys are going to ask and Jocelyn um, put this together this is a coloring sheet so you guys had asked for this we did something similar with the ultimate beginner series where you could put a little swatch up here mm -hmm. and then just for color placement. So if you're interested in this, this is now on our blog. So let me know if you have any questions on all the stuff I've been sewing. Mm. I am excited about Moda Blockheads and I'm, Moda has sent all of their remaining because you know they send the designers everything a little bit in advance and I'm thinking, should I just finish it and then just show you each week so that at least it's finished? But I don't know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, a few people have been asking about the quilt behind you. Uh, we okay. are going to get to that uh, later in the show, I promise. Um, Linda Gillespie was asking, what color, what number is that cream background? What color number is that this cream background? This one? Yes. So yeah, I don't know. That's the whole beauty of the scrap is I had some kits that I had bought that were from Fat Quarter Shop and they just used a background. I didn't look. I don't know. I don't know what background it is. But that was my whole goal was just to pull what I had. If I had to guess, I don't even know. I don't know. We'd have to get a color card and match. But yeah, I don't know. I um, just basically ran with what I had. From Alicia Allermatt Best, do you always put quilt table toppers for your furniture? Yes. So anything that... So for my bedroom, yes, because my kids, they get ruined. So because my kids put their Cokes, well, they don't drink Cokes, but you know, like what they drink this thing called Icy or Ice. I don't know what it is. Or the Sprite or whatever. Um, oh yeah, the little the bottle. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. They love it. <laughs> um, 
So I have them on my side tables. I have them on any kind of like long rectangular table. Kevin just got a new side table for his office and it's driving me crazy because there's no quilt on it. And I'm like, <laughs> can I make something? Because I don't want the top of the furniture to get messed up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then that way, if you want to put a drink or something, then you can and you don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah. So I do have quilts kind of everywhere. <laughs> From Emily Chadwick, what do you mean by fussy cut? Okay, fussy cut. So, so in the center, you can see these two blocks that I, can you zoom in? Yeah. What do you call it? I cut them where the picture would stay in there. So mm -hmm. I cut this where the flower would be in the center, the dress would be in the center. Mm -hmm and there's another one that I did the iron would be in the center mm -hmm. and so when you do that you just take a ruler like a square ruler put it on top and then factor in your quarter inch yeah, yeah and it's, it's like fun. being selective instead of letting it happen right right yeah like you actually put your ruler like on the part and sometimes when I fussy cut it doesn't work and I'll have to recut so it does sometimes waste fabric but this one's gonna be really cute and I did think about I might use a setting from Farm Girl Vintage or Farm Girl Vintage 2 or Spelling Bee or um, Vintage Christmas because there are different mix and match settings in all of Lori's books that use the six inch blocks. So I might do that. I haven't decided. I um, obviously have to finish the blocks, but uh, I am kind of leaving my options open on that. Mm -hmm. But she's going to give a free setting, so that's great. Ooh. From Thyre Mills, is a log cabin light color the same for every block? No. So I have, I decided that I didn't want it to be too busy. So I did just a white on white or a cream on cream. I did not use anything that had, um, let's see, like other fabric on it. But you can see like these are all different. Let's see. They're all different. They're not all different. I mean, some some I used different ones. So it was whatever's left over from a project because I the whole point of this quilt also is to not buy anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just whatever I had that was tonal. I guess that's the word, tonal, tone on tone. I didn't use anything like this that had like letters. This has letters on it. Just because I thought when I put that together that might become way too busy. But yeah, I have cream, white, um, but any, I didn't buy anything. Everything is left over from something that I made throughout the year or that I had laying around the house. But I don't even think I got from my stash. I think it was just from the projects. From Renee Bryan Brown, the red blocks that are in the box you just showed, what fabric line is that from? Oh my goodness. <laughs> the social lights, yeah. So the red, I think one of them is the good life. Let's see. So this red right here is random Lori Holt, Farm Girl Vintage, or B Basics. This one is an Aditta fabric from Laundry Basket Quilts, Andover, I don't know which collection. These are from The Good Life, so these blocks were left over. I made the cover quilt for the Quilt Bee book from Bonnie and Camille, and these were left over from that. This is left over from the Holly Berry block of the month that I sewed for the book. And this is at home from Bonnie and Camille. And some of these I mixed collections. So like, um, just because there's a red, not all of them are the same. Cause I'll just leave strips in my bin. And then when I have enough, cause you gotta have four, you gotta have four. So. When I get to four, I have enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From Deborah Berger, do you use batting in your tabletop quilts? Yes. So um, this is probably an 80-20. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike at My Long Arm says, good morning, Kimberly and FQS staff. Hi. Hi, Mike. That's fun. Um, so I bet that we'll have some quilts in here that he quilted. Yes, there are some. Uh, from no name, how do you get them so flat and stiff, your blocks? Starching. So I learned that technique from Lisa Bonjean. 
at Primitive Gatherings and we have a video she filmed with us and I've done a couple of other videos. So I starch everything, I let it air dry. That's also, I will tell you the big hic not hiccup, but that's really what's holding me back on Moda Blockheads is I'm using red, white, and blue, but I'm, I don't wanna starch everything because I'm not gonna use everything. So I have to stop, figure out what I'm gonna use, starch it, let it dry stop figure out what i'm going to do so that's why i said i really need to be more i need to get more organized with that project and plan all the rest of the blocks print it out starch it because sometimes what i'll do is i'll starch stuff and then i go back in like two weeks and i'm like oh i don't remember why i starched that or what that is or so i just need to get myself a little bit more organized with that mm -hmm. i don't do well if things are not organized my brain kind of Mm -hmm. can't function in that capacity so I just um, I got like six blocks done this week but a lot of them are future blocks and yeah the ones that I need to be doing those weren't done mm -hmm. <laughs> because I was str well one of them I made and I didn't like it so I threw it away mm -hmm. it looked really bad so mm -hmm. it's kind of stuff like that sometimes you get in a funk and so this week I was kind of in a funk with it but it, I think it's just because I was kind of at a standstill and this one block it just I kept putting too many mediums and it just looked horrible and it would look good when I placed the fabric out and then I would sewed it and I was like that is ugly that's I said it was funk I was like that that's what I say when something's really ugly is it's funk but it was bad <laughs> um, we had several questions about the log cabin blocks did okay. you use the paper pre-printed fusible how did you make those so we have a video on how I do it, but I use the log cabin. It's so I'm a paper. It's uh, foundation paper. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. So that's it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's foundation paper. I left all the paper on the back because I'm going to have my kids pull that off. Or I'll have just one party where I just sit and pull it off and sit at a trash can and pull it off. <laughs> now, what I do use is I use the seam roller by Lori Holtz to get it flat, and I use the add a quarter ruler. And then you can see I just have like leftover sheets um, ready to go. And it's a great way, any of our foundation paper piecing, is a, any of our foundation paper pads are really good, especially the six inch for using scraps. And kind of my goal is to use up everything instead of, I used to just have a lot left over and I didn't know what to do with it. So I'm trying to really use everything instead of I used to just give it away like to somebody who worked here or but my goal is to use it all and then I can show you more and just come up with ideas to kind of like this where you use what you have mm -hmm. all right and we still have more questions but I'm gonna save them for later parts of the show because they relate to other stuff worth doing uh, we do have some super chats I want to go through real quick uh, super chat from Barbara Coyle for five dollars thank you Barbara thank you they're super picky um, and then another super chat from Jackie Quigley for $9.99. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. And then we've had a few new members join uh, during the live stream. Uh, member Don McCoy, new Thank member, you. welcome. Uh, and then another new member, Kathy Deason. Welcome, Kathy. Yay. Thank you. And then another new member, a Sitcher. Welcome, a stitcher. Thank you. Uh, oh, and one last super chat here from Valeria Bauer for nine ninety nine, uh, and she put that pair saying "thank you" going like this. Oh, thank you. So we have a new book coming out. It is going to be shipping. Oops, there's no date. Uh, oh, I can look it up. My bad. October or November. But I wanted to show you, this is the quilt that I made for the cover. This is designed by Bonnie and Camille. And I'm gonna show it to you in two sections. So this is the cover quilt. It is a block of the month that is available. You can get just the book if you're interested. It's coming out in the fall. And I made this for the cover but what I wanted to show you was, with my leftovers, you can see, this is my leftover fabric from here. This is the leftover red from here. Oh. 
So that's how I'm getting, these are all leftover. So these were things that were included in the, in the block of the month that I started with. So I didn't buy anything to make these. And you're gonna see that I use this leftover background. So anytime I have just a little like strip left over, I can just save it. So everything that was made in this, and anytime you buy a block of the month from that quarter shop, you're gonna notice that you have a lot left over because we don't want you to ever be short. So I just wanted to show you all that and give you kind of a reference. I like the little rainbow. And then I wanted to let you know that we got to borrow this quilt from Camille. It's called Rainbow Baby. Um, oh no, it's called Rainbow Heart, sorry. There we go. And I just wanted to show it to you guys again. This one is made with scraps. It's 72 inches square. I love the quilting. Off the top of my head, I don't know who quilted it because it's um, one of Camille's quilters, but it's beautiful. And so this is another example of scrappy. So if you look at this quilt, this is not made from the collection. It is made from all different fabric collections that Bonnie and Camille have had over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. So that's how she's able to get, for example, sometimes they've had yellow. They haven't had that in a while. This pink is a little bit different, the orange. So this is another great scrappy example that you can use. And if you keep your scraps, you can make something like this or this or anything that you have. And it just is a way to use up all of your things. Okay, the book is shipping in September. I should have known that. And that book is at the printer right now. So that's exciting. That's exciting that it's at the printer. Yes. So, and I did want to let you guys know, we got an email last week about a low volume Fat Quarter Club. So I had mentioned that we were going to do one. So we set up a low volume club at Fat Quarter Shop. It's going to start in January. So if you sign up today, you just pay 99 cents and then it's 49.48 a month and it has 16 Fat Quarters. It's going to ship around the 15th of the month and we don't have a picture that's got a photo because they're all future groups that we just bought. And so if we just bought them, a lot of times we don't have the sample. Some companies will give us sample yardage, but most do not. And we are taking, it's very similar to the So Colorful Club, where we take from different manufacturers and put stuff together that you probably couldn't do at home and just try to take a big mix. And we're trying to do, um, very low volume with not as much background and that would be a great thing if you had that when you do something scrappy you can pull from something like that because i don't know for some reason today i'm just all about scrappy and just showing you different things that you can do with leftovers because you don't always have to buy stuff i know that it's hard like when i see something i'm like oh i gotta have that i gotta have that for example if Lori has a new fabric i gotta have it if bonnie and camille have a new fabric i gotta have it Fig tree, I buy about half of them. I mean, it's just, I feel like that, but you don't, like this stuff is, I don't even know. Like, I can't even remember the name of this collection. It's, this is from like years and years. I mean, I think when this was made, Lily was so, seriously probably in middle school. That's how old it is. Um, I mean, it's, um, but it's fun to like go back and use stuff that you already have. And it was funny because when I sent the quilt to Gina, she had texted me. And one thing about me that's really bad is my worst habit is I don't really pay attention to my phone. So I don't ever have my phone on. Like I don't have the ringer on. I'm horrible. Like if you text me and I don't, I, I don't write back, I'm just not good. So um, she had texted me and was like, which backing goes with which? And I was like, oh, whatever. I don't care. I was like, it's all just whatever. Scary. But I felt bad because she had texted me and I didn't answer for like a couple hours. Mm. But I'm horrible. Like if you, yeah, it's nothing personal. Like mm. it's just, I'm really bad. You always answer phone calls. Yeah, I do. I will. I do. And the reason I answer phone calls is because my ringer's off. But when you have on headphones, it still rings. Oh. But if you have on headphones and you get a text, it doesn't text. Because mm. I always wear headphones. Like in my house yesterday, I was just like, I just wear headphones because... I feel like it kind of puts me in a, 
I can concentrate better with noise. Mm -hmm. uh, so lots of people are wondering, what does low volume mean? Okay, so low volume would mean something that is light, like this is low volume. It's a background and it, and it will have like a print. This could be low volume too. But something that is a background, you can use it as a background on a quilt. A lot of people use them in modern quilts and there was like a big hubbub when the first, when the word was created because people were like, it's a controversy, it's a quilting controversy to say low volume. It was before your time, Lily, but it was definitely like a controversy because people were like, well, you shouldn't call it that. Like this would be low volume. So it's like more minimalist, less busy. Yes, prints. with a background. Mm -hmm. Like starting with the background, adding something to it, whether it be a little bit or a lot. This is a this is a low volume right here. Ooh. This is a low volume. And so it could be cream, it could be white, and it's basically going to be a grab bag of fat quarters, and you could just save them and use them as a background. You could save them and use them as backgrounds on something like this, or you can just make a low volume quilt. A couple years ago, Joanna did a beautiful low volume quilt that I loved, and I tried to get her to let me publish it, but she wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't let me. Um, but one day I might get her, one day. <laughs> I might, I might let, her, she might let me. So I, um, another thing that uh, Lily brought up yesterday, which was a great reminder, you guys had asked if we were gonna get more of the Minecraft Bella solid fat quarter bundles. So I did my research, we will have more in November because so, like several of the colors are sold out. So I did my research November, and then she said, why don't you bring the quilt? So I brought the quilt. It's very dirty because my son uses it. It's been used and loved. I know, he loves it. So this is a free pattern that you can find on Kelly Fannin's blog, which is seriously, I think I need stitches. If you just Google seriously, I think I need stitches, Minecraft, it'll pop up. Nice. We also have a link. Oh, okay, sorry, there's That's a link. Okay in the box, the description box. Yeah. So this, this is actually, um, and then on the back, I took letters from the Spelling Bee book from Lori Holt. Sorry. That's okay, it's a big quilt. It's really got a thick batting in it and I spelled his name. And a funny story, I'll tell you a funny story. At dinner this week, um, my kids were like, oh mom, you know, a lot of people like you, they think you're famous. I was like, I'm not famous. <laughs> um, I was like, it's, that's not what I, what I am, I'm not, I'm not that. And so they were like, well, we were watching your live stream and it was on Peyton's birthday. And so I think Christopher was upset because I haven't told him happy birthday yet in a live stream. But it's not his birthday for like two months. Oh. So he said, but everyone doesn't know how to spell Peyton's name. Maybe you should tell them. <laughs> because uh. people, some people spell it with an A. Mm -hmm. So it was, they were reading, they were even reading you guys' comments. I was like, first of all, y'all shouldn't watch me. <laughs> Just because I don't, I don't know, I feel uncomfortable when like people who really know me watch me, I feel weird. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't believe that my kids like watch the whole thing. And then he was like, you need to tell them. And I just thought it was so funny. <laughs> you, need to tell them. you need to tell them how to spell his name. Aww. I was like, well, it really doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. But yes, um, and I don't know who quilted this. I think Mike did. Mike at mylongarmquilt.com. But yeah, I love this one. And so I know that you guys are wondering. I also started, she has another free pattern from Harry Potter. Yes. And I'm not even halfway done, but I have all the fabric. I'm going to finish it. And that's for Will, another son. And then um, my other son, Peyton, if she would design like a WWE wrestling quilt, that would be what I would make. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, they, he likes wrestling. That's great. Um, Denise Marie made a good uh, definition, simple definition for okay, low good. volume. She put low volume equals not loud. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, 
Yeah, and everyone kind of has a different definition. So when it first came out, some designers were like, no, it's this, it's this. But now since then, I think it's kind of calmed down and it's what it is. It started out more of people that do modern quilts using it. But now I find it's more of everyone uses it. Okay. So I was gonna show you um, some of my friends did a free thing on their blog and I wanted to show it to you. So they had an event called Need a Little Christmas Party. Christopher from A Tattooed Quilter, Amanda from Jedi Craft Girl, and Bev from Flamingo Toast. This was last month. If you look up the hashtag Need a Little Christmas Project, these are all free patterns. Mm -hmm. So this one, they all use different. Let's see. This one is Peppermint Forest by Jedi Craft Girl. So this is one of them. So these are all free patterns. We don't have kits or anything, but this is another scrappy, which is why we have it in today. So you can use one of these for Scrappy September. Pull from your stash, free pattern. You don't have to buy anything. The next one is called Starry Ornament Table Runner by Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes. That is so cute. And you can see she fussy cut the house in the center of the star. Do you see it, Lily? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's really cute. And then this is a fun background. I mean backing. Backing. So this is a free pattern. So again, if you have fabric in your stash, you can use this for Scrappy September. I don't know where the others are. I think I'm Oh, I have a pop-up for Christopher's. Oh, okay, yes. We, I was like, there's one more. We did not get his in, yes. Yes. Yay. He's so good at these tablescape, like, pictures. I love it. Yeah, he lives in New York, so it's probably... Yeah, it's got... I like the quilting on that, where it was, like, diagonal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that is something that you can incorporate that into your scrappy September. I'm going to go through a few questions okay. we've been getting here. Okay, going down to the bottom. Uh, from Teresa Cold Scraps, are you going to get any more of the Backyard Blooms fabric in? No, it is discontinued. So what has happened is uh, a lot of people are buying fabric that never bought fabric before, and so it's really hard to get fabric right now. We are keeping that into account and increasing our orders for the future. We order six months in advance. Um, and one thing that I'm doing that you're gonna notice in the next week is I have, I'm revamping all of our solids. So I'm going through anything that I consider a basic, a dot, a stripe, anything basic, and I'm cutting new bundles. So that if you're wanting, because a lot of people are putting the solids on the back part of your face mask. So here's your face mask, right? That's low volume. And then this is the back and they're putting solids on the back. I know that's makeup, I'm sorry. This, um, and Gina Tell, thank you, made this. This is my favorite mask in the whole world. So I'm doing it because that would be a good way for people, if you're making masks, you can buy a more expensive fabric for out here, but on the back you can use a solid. So I'm kind of revamping all of that, and you're gonna see a lot of new bundles on our What's New page, a lot of older bundles we used to have. I'm bringing them back because now basics are really trending a lot more than they were. Uh, from Angela Stoutinger, will the Prim Village kit be coming in soon? Yes, so Prim Village, it probably will be mid to late September. What they do with that is they bring all that fabric in to America and they cut that in house. And the box that it comes in, it comes from a different country. So because the fabric is made in one country and the box is in another, the kits that come from Riley Blake that come in the really nice boxes come about a month after the collection to all stores. From Vicki Wishart, will you be getting more of the All Hallows Eve fabric in? Yes, so All Hallows Eve, Christmas Figs 2, and Flea Market Mix are all coming back in stock. So All Hallows Eve was supposed to be here already. There was a delay in customs. It should be here in about two weeks. That's also when I expect Christmas figs too, and I expect flea market mix October 1st. From Debbie Atkins, 
if you don't use starch fabric, do you need to wash out the starch? Okay, so let's be real here. I don't wash my quilts. This quilt has been washed many times, and this was starched. So this quilt, um, he, it's the, uh, it's the blankie for the stuffy pile. So my son Peyton loves stuffies. That's all, it's all stuffies. He's got, st every stuffy is named. So beside his bed, there's the bed, a floor, and the closet. So he has this on the floor, it's on the very bottom. All his stuffies go on top of this. And then they have to jump over the stuffies to get in the closet to get their clothes. So it's quite eventful. But yes, this has been washed and um, this I'll probably never wash until, I mean, I'll wash it when I get a Coke stain or tea stain or something like that on it. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't ever wash out the, the starch and you can tell it's starched. It's pretty stiff, but it'll, it'll kind of come out. But it's up to you if you like it. Um, and when I wash my quilts, what I do is I wash it on the gentle cycle and I never dry them in the dryer. I take them and either put them over like a big rod or a fence. So I'll just go outside and put it over a fence and know that I'll probably get dirt on it, but it'll air dry and it'll actually smell really nice because it air dried outside. So yeah, I, um, yeah, but he's gonna, yeah. He's going to be mad if I don't bring that home today. So, so Lily, we got to make sure that gets back in my car. Yes. He's going to have to put his stuffy pile back together. Well, because oh. Lily called me yesterday because I was working from home, and she was like, well, you could bring it. And I was like, hey, Peyton, where's that quilt? He's like, okay, I got it. He went and got it. Oh. He's so cute. Yeah. Uh, from Kathy Cardle Cronin, do you cut up your scraps in advance? And if so, what sizes do you cut for the scraps or storage? So you can... I got this idea from Lori Holt and she has a whole segment about it on her YouTube channel. Her YouTube channel is just called Lori Holt. It's a brand new channel and she posts on Fridays and she's talking right now about her scrappy storage. So that would be where I would start. We are working on something for the future that you're gonna love. That's all I can say about that right now. But I will say I took her idea. She mailed me for my birthday a label maker. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. So I've never had one, and she yeah. was like, you gotta have one. And I was like, I'm really cheap. I was like, I'm not gonna buy that. So she sent it to me, and I was so excited to get my label maker. So I found three boxes that I had, I think they were in the kitchen, in the pantry. We weren't using them, and I put two and a half, three and a half, and four and a half inch squares in them from my leftovers. Now I could add five and a half, and I could add one and a half, but I don't, I'm OCD, and I don't know where I got those boxes. So until I can find where I got those boxes, I'm not gonna add. But yes, I do anything left over that's that big, I will, well, the first thing I do is I use it for my log cabins. The second thing I do is use it for those boxes, the, the, the three boxes. And I've, I've shown them before, I can bring them sometime. But I do, it does, I do want to get two more sizes. I just have to figure out where I bought those. I don't even think I bought them. I think Emma might've bought them because they were in the pantry. She had this whole idea of she was gonna like organize the pantry and her dad had to stop her because he was like, okay, that's way too much organization. Cause I don't know where she got that from, probably me, but she was going to organize it just a little too much. From Deanne Kruger, when you paper piece, do you starch? Yes, I always starch. I never make anything without starch. So if I, when you starch, one side will stay the, same size and one side will shrink about a quarter to half an inch. So I encompass that in what I'm purchasing. So if it's a charm pack pattern, for example, this one, I was lucky, you didn't need the full charm pack. So in the pattern, it was fine because of the shrinkage. I really just do not enjoy sewing if I don't starch because I sew really fast. And when I say really fast, I mean like, really fast and so it my fabric will move too much so I like to um, starch. Uh, from Emily Chadwick, did Kimberly use 80-20 cotton batting and the two smaller table top box? Yes. You know what would be great Lily is can y'all email um, Mike and Gina and ask what batting we use? Oh yeah. Because, or Cheryl might know. Um, I just have a batting that I picked years ago that I liked, and so they use that, and so we'll have mm -hmm. to figure out what that is so that Lily can start answering. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we can do a blog post on it, or I mean, I don't know, something. Yeah. 
we buy the tubes, like the, they're called, they're just tubes. The rolls, yeah. Yeah, rolls. That's what they're called, rolls. And uh, I'll send a roll to Mike and a roll to Gina, and then they just pull from it. From Christine Baker, how hard is the Harry Potter quilt? Oh, it's easy. The hardest part of any of those quilts that she has provided is they're all squares. Um, they're all very easy. There's really hardly any um, corner squares. The hardest part I find when I was working with this and the Harry Potter is the color of thread. Because if you use white thread, you're going to see it. If you use like a really dark gray, you're going to see it. So I had to use like a medium gray, but I do feel like sometimes you can see my, my stitches and my seams. That's the hardest part with using solids is there's nothing to hide the imperfections. But yes, very beginner. And it's Kelly Fannin. I can't, but what is it? Uh, seriously, I yeah. need stitches. Seriously, I, need stitches. I think I need stitches. Yeah. Um, oh, Gina said that uh, she uses Quilter's Dream. Uh, Mike said 100% cotton and an 80-20 blend. Okay, and I think they're both Quilter's Dream. Yes, it's both Quilter's Dream brand. Um, okay, sorry. Lots of questions. Okay. Uh, from Teresa, do you ever feel like the fabric companies are releasing too much fabric? No. I feel like the fabric companies they want you got to think about it like not a craft but more of a business everybody wants their market share so they're gonna put fabric out to try to appeal to every age every um genre like any like they're gonna try to appeal to lily me denise cody kevin anybody so they're just putting out fabrics and if y'all buy it they're going to put it out i think you just have to be selective in what you buy um but no i don't i mean i would probably think that if the fabric was bad but all the fabric is so good that no i don't think it's too much but i think you know it's a business they're trying to run a business you have to pay every employee so if they want to grow their business that's really the only way to grow is to put more product out and all the stuff lately has been so good, so I have to say no. Now, if every sales rep, well, they don't show up anymore, but when they sent stuff, if it was all bad, yeah, I would say yes. But lately, it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's just, you know, we're a cottage industry, and to be able to sustain and keep in business, you have to put out a lot of product because you got to think about the cost and the it's you're not making a it's not like they're selling dell computers for a thousand dollars they're selling fabric for 1075 a yard and if you go down it's less and less like what i pay is less so it's just you're working on small smaller priced goods also you have to kind of consider that all right and we've had several new members joining uh while well, we've been answering questions here uh new member ray ann o'neill welcome ray and another new member uh e oppenheimer welcome and new member van uh Ingunian? thank you i know that's not how you pronounce that but feel free to tell me how you do pronounce it welcome van Yay! So, okay, so we're going to take this time. We have we keep getting the same questions over and over about subscriptions and memberships and all kinds of YouTube things. I'm not technical. So we're going to bring in the lovely Lily so that she can answer all of the questions. Is Ashley going to come read them to you? Oh, I guess that would be a good idea. Yeah, so Ashley, can you come read the questions? Because I don't know if I know how. Um, but any <laughs> kind of, I want you all to ask any kind of technical questions because... Lily knows. I had to text her yesterday because, oh, and yesterday, Lily, I couldn't get the video app to work. The app was down yesterday, which is why the videos oh, weren't, no. I didn't check the videos. But yeah, I cannot deal with technology. I don't know how to do it. So Lily's going to come and talk to you about it. And I'll be back because I still have more quilts. Mm -hmm. So this is Lily. Doing the old switcheroo as we put on and take our masks off. Uh, hi, everyone. My name's Lily. Uh, some of you may know I do a lot of the video stuff here. Uh, Ashley helps me out with that as well. 
but to start with, I'm gonna start with a topic that I've actually been hearing a lot of you guys ask about is subscribing. What is subscribing? Why should I subscribe to your channel? Uh, what does it mean? And then, wait, I'm subscribed, am I a member? What does that all mean? Uh, so subscribing to our YouTube channel uh, is free. Uh, it gives you notifications on new videos. Uh, if you're like on the YouTube app or on, on YouTube on your computer and logged into the account uh, that you're subscribed to us in, then we'll pop up on your feed more and every time there's a new video, it'll kind of be like at the top of everything. So you guys can see very easily like, oh, Fat Quarter Shop has a new video. Like I don't have to go searching for it, it's right there. Uh, so that's what subscribing is. Uh, it also does a lot for us on our end. Uh, if we get more subscribers and YouTube's like, oh, you guys are creating good content and therefore start sharing our content with a broader amount of people. So uh, really helpful for us to kind of share our tutorials. Um, as you guys know, we do tons and tons of free stuff here, free tutorials, free patterns, uh, and these live streams. So that's what subscribing is. Uh, and then to differentiate subscribing from memberships, uh, memberships are the monthly uh, paid side. It's a lot like a Patreon, uh, where we, uh, through YouTube, you guys pay $4.99 a month. And then with that, you guys get extra perks, uh, lots of behind the scenes, pictures, videos, uh, free patterns. We're going to start doing coupons again. Uh, so it's extra stuff. Um, and extra is the best word for it. It is not required in any way to see uh, any of the tutorials we do. All of that stuff is free. Um, I don't want anyone thinking like they have to pay to get our content here. It's not like that at all. It just helps support the production of these live streams of all the videos we do and all of the uh, work and software and camera gear that goes into that. Uh, let me know if we have any questions uh, or I can move on. Um, Lisa Clark is asking, what is the quilt block next to my name? Does it mean something? Oh yeah, so if you're a channel member, uh, you get a little like icon next to your name. Uh, oh, can you move the laptop? Sorry, thank you. Uh, so you get a little icon next to your name. Uh, I believe they are called channel icons. Uh, depending what sort of little quilt block you have right now determines like, oh, you've been a member for a month, you've been a member for six months, a year. We're about to have members that have been with us for two years and you get an extra special little uh, icon that changes when you get there. Um, those change out seasonally. Like I remember for 4th of July, we had like, um, like patriotic stuff. Uh, Cause you know, we're here in Texas in the USA. Um, and then for fall, we have like a pumpkin spice latte and the turkey and a pumpkin. Uh, and I think a chocolate bar, that one's my favorite. Um, so yeah, so you get that little icon next to your name if you're a channel member. It also helps us like if you're uh, asking questions, your name kind of stands out to us. Uh, but yeah, that's what that means. Um, also real quick, I wanted to cover how you guys can subscribe. Uh, there is a big red uh, subscribe button underneath all of our videos. Uh, it is always kind of on the bottom right corner, whether you're on a phone or on your computer, on a tablet, uh, it's always in that. A similar spot uh, you just click that button and you're subscribed to us um, Teresa McBrayer says I'm a paid member for the last two weeks but it doesn't show that I'm a member do you know why okay so there could be lots of things that we could troubleshoot with that um, either you joined through a different account and then uh, switched your accounts and the membership is only tied to the one that you uh, joined with um, so I know that's happened to other uh, people in the past where they were accidentally like on their um, husband's account or their daughter's account and then they actually joined with that one so it's attached to that. So that's a first like troubleshooting thing where you can kind of check the different accounts and see if uh, it would be like under your subscriptions in YouTube where it would pop up uh, wh whose account it's under. Um, the other thing that could be messing with it is that it just didn't go through on YouTube's end. Um, there I would recommend to make sure that, uh, to check if you've been charged for it, because if you have, then uh, we can have you contact Google support um, through a link that we can give you, and then they'll be able to like fix it on their end. Um, those are the two like main issues I've seen with that. Um, easiest way to check is if you go into our community tab, and we can give you guys a link to 
where the community tab is. Um, and right there you'll see uh, is where we put post all of our perks and stuff. And if you're just seeing kind of like our live stream announcements and general stuff, um, then that means your account isn't hooked up to the membership. Um, and if you are seeing the stuff that has like a little uh, icon next to it that says members only, then uh, it's working. Uh, but yes, if you are still having trouble with it after the live stream has aired, feel free to comment below and we will troubleshoot with you. Gail Stale asks, are there extra emojis on your site? Uh, not on the website, but YouTube just enabled this and I'm really happy about it because it's something we've been asking for for a long time. If you're a member, you get these emojis that you used to only be able to use in the live chat. Um, they're actually graphics made uh, custom here by um, our graphic designers. So they're super cute. Um, and now you can actually use them in any of our videos. So if you're commenting below on one of our videos, you can use any of those emojis, which is super great. Uh, they're super cute. Uh, just a little extra, again, perk of being a member. Nancy Rogers asked, is that Ashley? Yes, this is Ashley is speaking Ashley. right now. <laughs> um, and a bunch of people were asking if you made your skirt. Uh, kind of. So this dress uh, was gifted to me. This was a dress and it was gifted to me a long time ago. It came with like this top that had these like quarter inch sleeves. Um, and just at some point the sleeves started to fit kind of funny and I didn't like the way it looked. So instead of trying to fix the sleeves, I just chopped the top half off of it. <laughs> Kimberly's laughing behind the camera. Um, and then turned it into a skirt and just like added a button in the back so it would like hook on. Um, but yeah, that's what I did with this. This I got from a uh, Stitch Fix. Mary Denny is asking, where do we find the 499 membership in since oh. you're answering this, can you also explain the workaround? Yes. Okay. So uh, we talked about this several live streams ago. Uh, there is this thing with YouTube where, well, first of all, to join. Sorry, I'll start there. Uh, next to the subscribe button, once you have subscribed, you will get a button to the left of that that says join. So that join button is how you do the paid membership, which again, I really want to reiterate is not required, like by any means, it is just an extra thing that helps us out here. Um, but yeah, so you hit join and then it'll kind of tell you like, this is what you get by joining and this is how much it is. Um, if you are joining on an Android or a desktop computer or a laptop computer, it will tell you it is $4.99 to join, um, plus any applicable tax, uh, depending what state you live in, what country you live in. Excuse me. Uh, but if you're trying to join on an iOS device, meaning any sort of Apple device, be it an iPhone, an iPad, um, I'm not sure about iMacs or MacBooks, um, but I, I think it's pretty much any iOS device, it'll tell you it's $6.99. So that price difference comes in because Apple, on a lot of their apps, add an extra fee. And those extra fees are not set by us, they're not set by YouTube, they're set by Apple themselves. Um, you might see fees like this if you like have Spotify on your uh, iPhone or different apps like that. And so we have a workaround for this because we don't want you guys to be paying extra um, when it's only going to, you know, directly to Apple, like no one else is seeing that money. Um, so the workaround is to join on a non-Apple device, say like a computer or an Android phone, and then once you've joined, make sure you're signed into your YouTube account when you've joined. Then you can go back to your iPhone and access all the perks and benefits there. It won't charge you extra to do it. It's just the way you joined is what determined that initial price. But yes, it should be $4.99. Um, that is the price we and YouTube have set. Uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but um, Lurgio FACS is asking, what is a super chat and how does one do it? All right, super chats. Um, so super chats are uh, kind of along the same uh, venue as memberships, uh, but it's a one-time thing. So you will have uh, on your live chat, whether it's on your computer or a phone, you'll have this little icon at the bottom of where you can like type to comment and it'll be like a little dollar sign. You click that and it'll have a slider and that slider determines um, how much money you wanna donate. So it's essentially a donation to our YouTube channel. Uh, and it's a lot like the memberships where like all that money is just going to the production of the videos. Uh, like I said, much like a Patreon supporting the production of that. Um, 
yeah, so you do the slider and then you can also do a super sticker, uh, which is like those little pairs you guys see on our YouTube and that I'm always like trying to mimic for Kimberly behind the camera. Um, and that just adds a cute little thing. It makes it stand out for us. Um, if you do a super chat, um, like if you have a question and in these live streams where there's thousands of people watching, sometimes I can't get to everyone's question. If you do it as a super chat, I will 100% guarantee ask that question. Um, also, most of you guys do super chats just to say very nice, sweet words, and I'm very thankful for that. You guys are the sweetest. Um, but again, that's just a super chat. It's only on YouTube. Uh, if y'all are watching on Facebook, uh, it's a YouTube thing. Uh, but again, not required by any means. Uh, just something extra, again. Home Mom is asking, when we hit the like button, what does that do for you guys? For you guys? Oh yeah. yeah, so like button does a lot for us in terms of uh, how YouTube sees us and the YouTube algorithm. Um, so same as subscribing, if you guys give us that thumbs up, that tells YouTube, oh, lots of people are giving this video a thumbs up. We're going to promote it more because that means it's really good content that other people should see. So, um, and that's basically the algorithm, how it works and starts showing our videos to more people so we can reach a uh, broader audience, uh, reach more new quilty peeps. Uh, yeah, make more friends out there. <laughs> KT Mickey Nat is asking, how do you use the special emojis if you are a member? Okay, good question. Uh, when you are typing in our, our live stream chat, they are at the bottom. You'll see this little, I think it's like a smiley face. Um, to do any emoji, you click that button. And once you click that button, uh, at the bottom, it'll say FQS. Um, and then those are our emojis and they'll appear there, appear there. And so you'll just click on one to add it wherever you want to add it in your comment and they come up once you hit send. Anita Napier is asking, is there a membership for the Floss Tube channel? Good question. There is not. So uh, we have two channels, uh, as a lot of you may already know. We have our quilting channel, which is this one, and we have a separate Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel, which is about cross stitch. Um, YouTube sees them as completely different entities, two different people, so to speak, even though it's us, uh, and we're the same people. Uh, but so the memberships, if you join the channel membership that is only on the quilting channel, we do not have a separate one at this moment for the Floss Tube. Um, and so those same like emojis and stuff that you get on this channel will not transfer to the other one just because YouTube again sees it as two separate things. Uh, no Flies is asking, are you going to sing this morning, Lily? Uh, I was afraid that was going to come up. Uh, I am going to sing you guys the thing. It's I'm not an amazing singer by any means, um, <laughs> but I'm going to sing you guys a theme song from my favorite TV show. I love Lucy and she loves me. We're as happy as two can be. Sometimes we quarrel, but oh, how we love making up again. Lucy kisses like no one can. She's my missus and I'm her man. I forget the next part. Da 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 da. Cause I love Lucy, yes, I love Lucy and Lucy loves me yay confetti oh. cannon for lily <laughs> thanks kimberly <laughs> she's clapping for me back there <laughs> uh sue sweeney is asking what is a patreon oh okay so it's like our channel memberships but it's a separate website called patreon um where you can be a patron of the arts or a patron of whatever podcast youtube channel um i think even like certain like movies go on there, tv shows like uh indie tv shows go on there it's how they get funding uh and it's a, like a monthly fee that you pay and you get extra stuff from them uh just very similar to our channel memberships okay so last thing i want to go over because i saw lots of you guys asking uh was how do i use the hashtags to enter this uh uh hang on stash september uh, contest FQS stash September uh, so when you are on Instagram uh, I believe you have to be on Instagram to enter have an Instagram account 
and share a picture of your stash, your scrappy stash. Sorry, it's scrappy September, not stash September. Thank you. Um, sorry, we're double checking it. Scrap FQS scrappy September. Thank you. Because you're using your stash with your scraps. Okay, so if you share a picture of your scraps, like when you're starting, and then like share a picture of like your quilt as you're working or once it's complete, when you share that on Instagram, as you're typing the description, you use the hashtag or the, the pound sign, the, the number sign, uh, to sort of alert Instagram that you are using something that other people can sort of link back to. So you do the hashtag and then with no spaces, type in FQS, Scrappy September, no spaces in between all of that. And then when you post it to Instagram, it'll highlight it um, in blue so that other people can click it. And it makes it findable for us because then we just search that hashtag and anyone who pops up in that search from using that hashtag will be entered to win the contest. Uh, that's also just how you share things on Instagram and kind of get more people to find you based off of what you're posting. And lots of people are saying, great job. Thank Aww. you for singing. They Aww. love you. You have a great voice. Thank you. I love all of you guys. You guys are the sweetest. Um, there was a question from Maria, Maria Wells, I think, at the bottom. Sorry, uh, on the spreadsheet. That I just wanted to make sure I got to before I shed it off the seat. Okay, from Maria Wells, uh, I saw you asking about how to get the stream on your computer. Uh, easiest way to do it is hop on your computer, go to youtube.com slash fat quarter shop and uh the live stream will be the very like top thing that pops up for you typically um and if not if you just scroll down a little there's a playlist called uh behind the scenes and our latest live stream will be the very first video right there you just click that when we're live and you can watch it excuse me <laughs> you can watch it on your computer uh you can do the same thing on a tablet if you have a smart TV or like a Roku TV or an Apple TV that has like the little YouTube icon, you can do the same. Um, again, easiest way to find it too is if you subscribe and you're logged into your channel on any of those devices will just pop up immediately at the top and you can just click in and watch the stream from there. Um, Alicia Stokes is asking, with channel memberships, are the coupons every month and the discounts always or are they one time and one use? So they, right now coupons have been varying um, just because of our situation here with uh, COVID and all of that. And I know Kimberly has kind of talked about that before. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But we, we used to do like one coupon either once a month or once every two months. Um, and then they are one time use and then they vary. Um, they're usually related to something going on, like a, a, something that we have going on at the time, if that makes sense. <clears throat> Sorry, I need some water. I'll go grab some right now. Um, but yeah, okay. Thank you guys for having me. And here's Kimberly Jolly. Yay, Lily! Yay. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys this quilt. This is going to be a quilt kit that is coming out soon. And we got to borrow it to photograph. It's called Sugar Stars. Let's see if I can get it. So I want it, let me move this real quick. I just wanted to show it because we have to send it back to the person who made it. So it's a quilt kit by Lori Holt called Sugar Stars. It is going to ship in September. And it's awesome. It's very scrappy. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the kits that comes from Riley Blake where the pattern only comes in the kit. It does not come separately. So, and you can see, okay, all those backgrounds, those are low volume. So all of these whites, you could consider low volume. And the ones in this quilt are from her B, from Lori's B backgrounds. Another kit that we have coming soon. So we get to borrow these quilts, but then they have to go back. So a lot of times I'm showing you stuff in advance because that's when we get to borrow them. This one is called Daybreak. The collection is called Line Work. It is, um, we're pre-selling it. I'll open it up. And so if you pre-buy it, um, it'll ship to you when it comes in. And we are almost sold out of this one. 
And this one, if you look in the center of the hexagons, those are pretty much fussy cut. So you can see there's a squirrel. That's definitely fussy cut. Butterfly, monkey. So there's a lot of, I think I have it the wrong way. That's why the animals are sideways. So if I put it the right way, you're gonna see the animals go up and down. And the person, I don't know who quilted this, but it's amazing because they accented the animals within it's hard to see because obviously it's black but it's all very custom some of the animal like the raccoon you can see they're a little bit mm -hmm. they outlined them raccoon. and so we're gonna mail this one back did you mean the panda sorry oh there's a raccoon oh is there a raccoon okay I missed okay it. hold on maybe it's a squirrel have y'all been on reddit and seen all the squirrel posts okay hold on <laughs> right here hold on hold on let me see it on the camera and I'll Oh yeah, that is a monkey. Oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking, yeah. I see what you mean. I think I was looking over here. Oh, those are, I think those are... Right there. Oh, that's a monkey. Lemurs, yeah. I think they're lemurs. Yeah, I don't know my animals. <laughs> but if you look on Reddit, there's a lot of posts about squirrels, and they're so cute. <laughs> um, that's the only social media I use, so you'll probably have noticed I haven't been on Facebook. I can't handle all the people, all the negative stuff going on in the world so i just don't go um this is called opening night quilt kit this is on the coming soon to be you can just you can't buy this one in advance you can just get notified when it's coming and it's called opening night and it is tulip pink fabrics and it's using line works and true colors mixed so cool and then This one is Mini Charm Muffins. This is Apricot and Ash. This is in stock now. We have some kits available. It's a shortcut quilt that has a free pattern and a free video. Nova designed it. Lori from Customer Service stitched it and Mike from MyLongArmQuilter.com made it. The quilt behind me is called Just Peachy. So it is called Just Peachy. It is a Jolly Bar kit. And I think the kits might be sold out, but if they are, the Jolly Bar, all you have to do is buy the Jolly Bar and just add a background and a binding. So you can still make that kit by buying the Apricot and Ash Jolly Bar. All of our Jolly Bars come with a free pattern. Our Jolly Bars are trademarked by us and are just for us. They're five by 10 inches. And we're gonna start carrying more of them. Some other new stuff that we have, this is so cute. This came in yesterday or two days ago. It's called a cozy, Chris, a cozy kitchen. It's in our newsletter. I might, I might have to buy it. So this is the box that it comes in. It's a really nice box. It's got a magnet closure. So you can see Lori designed it. And it has all the fabric you need. It's um, from Bake Sale. And the pattern is in the bottom so pretty I'm gonna have to take that home and then we also have oh real quick I have pop-ups oh. for that sorry oh okay just to show what the table runner looks like yeah so that's what it looks like it's so cute it's perfect for my house we look good in my kitchen Yay. and then we also have this trick-or-treat carry along bag we have provided this bag for a couple years and each year we make it in different Halloween fabrics. It's a free pattern. So again, if you want to use your stash for scrappy September, you can use this pattern. It's free. It's called trick or treat carry along bag. And we made this one. Um, Teresa made this one and this is Riley Blake fabric. So it's really cute. And she did a lot of really nice detailing like on her. Um, this is a flange, but up here she did a lot of top stitching, which really makes it nice. And then the last thing that I brought today to show you is Kevin and I ordered Moda this week finally, and we decided to add this collection. So I had shown what we bought previously, but I always want to show you what we're going to have. So this is called Confection Batiks. It is by Kate Spain, and we are putting this online as we speak. This will Ooh. ship in March. Do you like it? I love it. So um, we're going to be expanding our batiks. 
so we're gonna have more and more batiks and so we decided to buy this it's very um i don't know it's just very happy i, I would say kevin was looking at it and he was like but it's so happy and then there are some rayon batiks which i don't know much about um it's i just don't know much about it it's 100 percent rayon so it's a little bit thinner and it's yardage so i would think it would be something maybe like the texture of lily's shirt so it'd be more for clothing mm -hmm. it's very um soft but much thinner than the quilting but still i mean perfect so let me know what questions you have i know i showed a lot of stuff i really want you to break out your stash this weekend just go dig in your stash find a pattern find basically i had a kit for this and I didn't even use the kit. I just totally changed it. Mm -hmm. um, so just go through your stash, bust your stash, and watch Lori's channel so that you can um, see kind of some of the stuff she does. I learned a lot of what I do from Lori because she's my idol, and I always like to give credit where credit is due. Like I learned the starching from Lisa Bonjean. Quilting is a community. It's not, um, I feel like I learned so much from other people and I always wanna give them credit when I've learned something from them. And I can tell you that um, working on this was, it took me a long time because I'm not like Lori. Lori's great with color. She can just pick stuff up and just, oop, it looks good. It took me hours to lay out exactly where I wanted it because I didn't want anything to touch. And um, mix, cause I mixed like four charm packs. I mean, it was like tedious, but I'm very proud of it. And I'm so proud that I didn't spend any money the, oh, I did spend money on paying Gina, but that's that's okay. I like to pay Gina. But you know what I mean? Like, everything else was free. Mm -hmm. uh, Roseanne Smythe wanted us to know that Tula's quilts are typically quilted by Angela Walters. That's, that's correct. Funny. Angela Walters, she's amazing, and she has lots of books that have been published by C&T that talk about her methods, and she does a all of her stuff is custom. It's not pantograph mm -hmm. and very detailed takes her hours. She also has a YouTube channel, I believe. Yeah, it's a Midnight Quilt Show. Mid Midnight Quilt Show? I don't know. I think so. I know she drinks wine in it. That's what I know. Uh, that's what I love watching about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's relatable. It's, uh, it's a lot about long arm quilting, which I'm not into, mm -hmm. but she's funny. Yeah. It's hard for me, guys. Like, one thing I will admit, I don't watch other people's YouTube channel that's in the quilting industry mm -hmm. because it gets in my head. I like to really come on this channel, be myself, show you what I do. I don't want anyone to ever say, oh, you got that idea from me, or I don't ever want to be influenced, even if it's um, subliminally by somebody else. Now, I watch Lori's because Lori's my best friend. So, of course, I'm going to watch hers. But I did want to say um, I try to just do my own thing. But I watch like all kinds of other people's YouTubes and use ideas from that, but they're not in this industry. I try to kind of do my own thing. All right. uh, from Lisa Clark, do you have a batiks club? We do have a batik club and we use 100% Hoffman and it is one of our most popular fat quarter clubs. It is very inexpensive. It's a great value for the money and you get a fat quarter, 12 fat quarters that we hand select. So one thing that Hoffman does that's different from other companies, for example, Moda, they put together everything as a collection. So for example, when they come visit or when they used to come visit, when things were different, it's a collection. You know that this piece will go with this piece. Everything mm -hmm. matches. What Hoffman does is very different. They do cap sets of about eight to 10 and they all are just random. So there might be a rust um, cap set. This is considered a cap set. And then they might have a black cap set and then a maroon cap set and a cream cap set and they're not collections. So Cheryl actually uh, does it for us if she's here that day. We try to have Cheryl pick all of our, our um, batik clubs because she loves batiks. I don't typically use them so she knows what people like better than I do and she does a great job and we just mix and match and put stuff together and it's it's great um, I don't I don't really work with batiks I think they're great because they're stiffer so I think if I worked with them I would like it because I do like things that are stiff mm -hmm. from Stacy Fallon is bake sale being reprinted no I think what they did for that kid is took some leftover bolts is what I think they did. But as of 
what I know it's not being reprinted. But I would love it if they did because I like all of Lori's things. Mm-hmm. From Wilma Evans, is Quilter's Dream similar to Warm and Natural? Yes, but it's a much higher quality. So Quilter's Dream, I what I do know about it is it's owned by a lady I've never met. I've heard great things about her. Everything is made in America. And um, she has a factory and she makes it. And Quilter's Dream is kind of like the premium. I would consider Quilter's Dream up here. And then I would consider like Hobbs, Warm and Natural and all the others like down here. But I don't, I don't know. I think Cheryl found me the batting that I like a long time ago. Okay. From April Bowden, what did Kimberly mean by cottage industry? I've never heard that term. So cottage industry just means, and it's probably not a cottage industry, but I think of everything like business. That's just how my mind works. So Amazon would be like big business, huge business. Quilting is a smaller industry, so it's not like you're selling to a ton of retailers. You're selling to a very select retailers who do just this specific thing, kind of like knitting. So knitting would be a cottage industry. Only, you know, you're not selling to... Office Depot, Amazon, Walmart, Costco. It's a much smaller industry, so it's not as, I mean, profitable as like if you were Dell Computer or Microsoft or Amazon or, you know, selling the same thing over and over for a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So it's just a smaller industry. That's the way I think of it. It's probably technically not a cottage industry. I just, it's just a much smaller like what we do is very selective Mm -hmm. um you know there's designers there's i mean it's kind of like i mean you could compare it to like the makeup industry but the makeup industry is much bigger but the makeup industry has designers like the kardashians and i don't know whoever like estee lauder and you know all that it's very similar but i mean makeup you sell makeup everywhere you sell it in walmart you sell it in Nordstrom, Target. So like you could think of makeup as like mass market, whereas quilting, it's not. It's got designers. It's the same kind of concept as a, it's the same kind of concept. You you know, the designers make money, a commission off their fabric, off their books, the same way that a Kardashian would make a commission off of what she sells to other people or Kim Kardashian sells her lipstick color to like Laura Mercier or whatever. It's the same concept, but a much smaller scale. That's kind of what I mean. It's probably not technically 100% correct, but that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I went on a tangent. That was good. Uh, From Jackie Quigley, can the scrappy quilt be from a kit to qualify? I have the mug quilt from Lori Holt. Yeah, anything that you have in your stash that you don't have to buy. So we try to include some scrappy patterns on our blog that are completely free um, so that if you don't have a pattern in your stash and then we came up with some that are paid but they're really good scrappy um quilts but yeah anything that you have bought that has been sitting there use it up that's what i would consider um because this was a kit but i didn't use any of the fabrics in the kit i have and the reason why i think it was a group that had maybe some purples or it had like colors that didn't match my bedroom And so I was like, well, I'm not going to use that, but I'll use something similar. But you can see, like, this collection is not the same as this collection or this collection or this collection. They're all just random. From Scrap Fair Knits, is there a video on how to organize your leftovers? New quilter here. I think Lori has one. I think Lori probably has one. I've shown my sewing cabinet that I put my scraps in. Um... We can maybe do like a more detailed one next year after COVID's over and then Lily can come to my house and I can show um, like a little bit more detail because I haven't done that in a while, but we obviously have to wait until the world gets its act together. (laughs) And the people in this world get their act together. I feel like Mm -hmm. everybody's going to get their act together. (laughs) Um, uh, A few people have just been commenting how... uh, Hang on, what's the word? Beyond thrilled they are uh, about how we've caught up on orders with the COVID backlog that we have. Yes, we have done a great job. Thank you. We are trying our best. Yes. Uh, okay. From Carol Bash, when is Ombre Ferry Dust shipping? I think it's probably two weeks is my guess. I don't actually know. 
I would just look at the month online. I'm not exactly sure on that one. From Ginger Nikaza, will you have a quilt kit for Witches Night Out with All Hallows Eve fabric? No, we sold out of them. And so when we reordered, we didn't reorder any of the kits. We just reordered yardage. Okay. A uh, few people were wondering if we are in the path of the hurricane. No, I didn't even know there was a hurricane. That's, that's how much I don't watch the news or get on Facebook or anything. I don't get on stuff because I can't handle it right now. Um, I didn't know there was a hurricane and I was getting my hair cut yesterday and the lady was like, oh, did you hear? So she told me all about it, but no, we're not near it at all. But I didn't even know there was, I mean, that's how like, I just block myself out from things mm -hmm. because I think the world has gone crazy and I don't want a part of it. I want everything positive. Mm -hmm. So I read it as the only social media where I can just really weed it out. Mm -hmm. Cause you can just, I just look at dog pictures. Like, I seriously look at dog and cat pictures, and one day Kevin was sitting next to me, and he's like, is this really what you do? He's like, do you not think it's strange? I'm like, no, I think it's great. I think it's great. I should put Piggy on here. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a study that proved, like, looking at cute animals, like, really helps your mental health. Well, that's the thing about the squirrels. Have you seen it, the squirrel? I it's haven't the, seen the squirrel. It's on the... There's a thread called All AWWW on Reddit, and last weekend they had where the squirrels are like splotted, like where they Spluted. just- Splooted. That, yeah. what, whatever that- Sploot. That. Yeah. And so everyone was showing like squirrels in their neighborhood that were like that. Oh. It was so a whole cute. trend. Yes. So um, see, that's where my mind goes. I go to random things. <laughs> Half the time Lily doesn't even know what I'm talking about, but I very, I didn't even know there's a hurricane. That's horrible. Yeah, but yeah, sending all the good vibes and thoughts and prayers to the people yes. in the hurricane right now. Be safe out there. Um, from Joe and Linda Fram, is the opening night an actual kit from Free Spirit? Yes, those are pre-cut kits from Free Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a few people are asking if they wanted to be a fabric designer, how do they start? So you would contact the manufacturers like Moda or Riley Blake. What uh, people do is they are they send in a portfolio, so an art portfolio. A lot of designers went to art school and there's a thing called an art portfolio and you put all your information in it and you mail it to the fabric companies. And so I stay completely out of that realm um, because I'm just a store. So if you wanted to send, if you wanted to print fabric and you sent it to me, I couldn't do anything for you because I don't print fabric. So it would, you would go directly to the manufacturer and present, um, present, you know, your resume, your experience, your drawings, you know, some people I've, cause I have seen the portfolios people send in. Some designers will actually hand paint it. Some will send it in digitally. Um, everyone designs a little bit different. All right, just a few more questions here before we wrap up. Uh, from Eleanor DeVry, I'm a YouTube member, but when you offer a free pattern to members, I am not able to print. Um, so for that, we offer a Dropbox link for that. You have to make sure you download the pattern and then after you download, print. Um, if you're having trouble with that, uh, again, feel free to put a comment below the video after the live stream and we can help you out. Yeah, and on the comments, what we do is we answer those during business hours. Oh, yeah. So like at night, I see a lot of you will comment and then you'll comment again but Ashley's in bed <laughs> or I'm in bed. I'm in bed so too. you have to, so like if you comment over the weekend, we'll get back to you, but not until Monday. We don't work 24 hours. So mm -hmm. it kind of cracks me up. Cause I'm like, Ashley's probably, I don't even know Ashley's phone number to text her. Like if I send her something, <laughs> I email it to her. Yeah. So she's going to see it when she comes to work. She's, she doesn't work 24 hours. Yeah. So that just sometimes cracks me up. <laughs> like, yeah, but we do try to get back to them as soon as we can once we're yeah, here. Yeah. But like, if you comment on the weekend, you got to give us till Monday. Cause we're not, we don't check all of that all the time. Yeah. I mean, I do, but I'm, it's a little bit different. I own the company. I do work almost 24 hours a day. Cool. <laughs> Yesterday I worked 12 hours. Um, so, but my employees, they're not required to work like I work. Hmm. Um, and then a few people were wondering how you build your stash and how you coordinate colors when you're picking from it. So for stash, I a stash is just, you can buy it any way you like. So Lori, what she does is she'll just go in a store and if she likes it, she buys it and she'll buy whatever size she wants. I prefer to buy layer cakes or fat quarter bundles. Those are my two favorite. And I usually shop by designer. So I usually buy all of Lori's items, 
all of uh, Bonnie Camille's fabric and then Fig Tree, and I just keep them in different sections. Sometimes I'll buy stuff that is kid friendly, that's cute, because then I'll think, oh, if somebody has a baby, I'll have something in my stash. But I don't buy too much. I just try to buy by pre-cut. I would say just buy um, a pre-cut if you like the collection. And I just keep everything. I keep all my fat quarters together, all my layer cakes together. Yeah, we'll have to just do a video of what I have going on in my house when the mm -hmm. world... Because um, it's all organized. Mm -hmm. I will say my, my um, office right now is like a disaster. Like everything is just... Because I'm sewing on the charity quilt, so it's just stuff mm -hmm. everywhere. I've got the charity quilt I'm working on. I've got the Sherry McConnell. I've got the log cabin. I've got the um, Moda Block Kids, and I've got something else. It's just, like, crazy. Mm -hmm. I realized you meant your office at home because I was like, your office here is spotless. What are you oh, talking yeah, about? Oh, yeah. No, I'm very – I can work better when things are clean. And so yesterday I was like, I'm just going to work today, but tomorrow – like, this weekend I'm going to, like, really clean stuff up. All right. Uh, from Debbie Kroll, uh, they were wondering why Blossom went up, I think, a dollar in a week? And asking if you could explain. Oh, yes. Okay, so on the basics, I went through yesterday, mm -hmm. and a lot of prices have increased, and we didn't increase the prices. So stuff that used to cost us a lot less has gone up in prices, and I'm just going through all the basics. I'm increasing the bundle prices, the fabric prices I'm going through invoices and just incre if our cost is increased we're increasing the cost um, but that's just on basics I'm just going through uh, basics a lot of stuff used to be way cheaper and we just you know prices went up and I never paid attention and so I'm like oh well we're actually losing money so if it went up it's just our cost went up uh, very sweet comment here from Victoria Lopez. Uh, they said, I just received my ultimate quilt kit and I love it. You are a little ray of quilting sunshine during these difficult times. Everyone is living. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. Um, the pokey little pineapple wants to know if we could do a video on batik quilts. You know, that would be really good to bring in a guest designer mm -hmm. and do something with somebody who's into batiks. That would be a really good idea. I kind of mm -hmm. have an idea on who I could bring in to. Mm-hmm and how to work with them. Uh, obviously, we have no guests right now. We don't even see sales reps. I thought about it yesterday, and I have been in business 17 years, and from the very beginning, I've had a sales rep named Bob. Everyone here knows Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen him every month for 17 years. I have not seen him since, like, February 25th. Oh, it is the God. oddest thing. And his emails, the reason I keep thinking about it is all his emails are going to my spam. And Kevin and I can't figure out how to get them. So Kevin's like, why haven't you answered Bob? I'm like, what? And so I have to go like dig to find his emails. So he started texting me yesterday because he's like, you're not answering. I'm like, oh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's odd to like have seen somebody for 17 years mm -hmm. and. And just not. Yeah, I haven't even talked to him. I was like, you know, I probably should like call him or okay. something. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's just weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From Teresa McMath, are you going to sew the Honey Bun Labor Day weekend sew along with Moda? I am thinking about it. So that is a fun little thing that Moda is doing. It is this weekend. I don't think I'm doing it just because I have too much other stuff going on and I got to get a book to the printer. But it's really cute. Y'all should look it up. It's on the Moda blog. And they basically take a solid and a, and a um, Honey Bun and they make like a patch it's very patchworky it's really cute mm -hmm. I think that I um, am not I'm actually coming to work Monday so I don't really have a lot of time uh, and then a few people just in the chat wanted to let us know uh, the midnight quilt show was technically canceled because it was a blueprint thing um, but quilting is my therapy and Angela Walters are the two channels that she does now okay for her video stuff uh, Okay, we have a lot of new members that we're going to go through. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for joining. Uh, Tom Gormley, new member. Uh, Beverly Luth. Welcome, Beverly. And Chris Christine Nolan. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, Christine. Uh, I read Christine Nolan. I was like, Christopher Nolan. Sorry. Uh, that's a film director. Um, oh, I was like, wait, that's <laughs> not the guy's name. No. I was thinking uh, of it Nolan It was Christine. Ryan. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Deborah Weidrick, welcome Deborah. Uh, and then Roseanne Smythe, welcome Roseanne. Thank you. 
And then we had a super chat from G Griffin for $5. And they said, good morning, Fat Quarter Shop and everyone watching. Grateful for all the community. Hope you all have a wonderful day and weekend. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And more new members. Uh, Tanya Sullivan. Welcome, Tanya. And Sonia Mack. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you. And Veronica Jeffrey. Welcome, Veronica. Veronica is like one of my favorite names to say. It just feels really good coming Aww. out. <laughs> um, new member, Pat Ryman Schneider. Welcome, Pat. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Kathy O'Shia for $9.99. Uh, and Kathy, sa- Kathy says, thanks for all you do. It's pronounced O'Shea. Okay, from Kathy O'Shea. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me make sure I didn't miss anyone. Okay, super chat from Karen Weber for $4.99. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I don't know how Lily does all this because I was watching Ashley back there. I can't figure out what's going on over there. Like their screen <laughs> is like so high tech. And sometimes I watch people who are on live stream. I'm like, you need to get the technology that Lily has. <laughs> but then I'm like, no, I don't want to like email somebody and it's tell them a, how to. Yeah. But it's, it's very, it's nice. what she does back there, I could not. Oh, thanks. First of all, I could hardly see the screen because my eyesight's so bad. Yeah. Um, we do have several computers going. So <laughs> that's part of it. Um, new member, Kathy Longo. Welcome, Kathy. Okay, a new member, Victoria Lopez. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, Victoria. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to take one more question here. Uh, Gina Tell at the beginning was saying, what are y'all working on this weekend? So this weekend, I am going to get my act together and get Moda Blockheads planned. So I'm going to plan... Every single week, I'm gonna print, I'm gonna color code an electric quilt, which is how I color my items. I'm gonna print it out, I'm gonna starch it, have a big stack. And then I'm also going to try to figure out my log cabin. I'm gonna actually just ask my daughter to lay them out this time and just see if maybe she could come up with an idea for how to make it look good, because she's really good with color. And I am going to work on the next couple of blocks for Sherry McConnell's quilt, because she sent those to me in advance. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to get caught up and then I'm gonna come to work Monday and proof a book. Just gotta go to the printer. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, one last super chat here from Hijan Kim for uh, 50,000, I think it's the South Korean won. Uh, oh. They said, socialites and shine on block of the month. I am waiting two projects to come to my hands. Uh, I'm a cancer and my cancer uh, recurred. October, I will have surgery and chemo will follow, but I'm going with you definitely. Oh, thank you. I Good hope luck. everything goes well. Yes, we are keeping you uh, in our thoughts and sending you good vibes for sure. Um. So I wanted to give two shout outs today. The first one is to my mom. It's her birthday. <gasps> Happy so, birthday. Yeah, she hasn't logged in yet, so I don't think she's awake yet. I texted her on the way to work. Um, so it's my mom's birthday, and then I wanted to give a big shout out to Susie Clary, just because she sent me a really nice email. It made me feel good, and I just thought that'd be super nice. So um, I hope you guys join us for Scrappy September, and bust your stash, and have a great weekend. Be positive. Um, do something fun. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.